after a full week of practice, getting ready for an opponent that might be the most complete team in the NFL. This is a huge challenge today for our Tennessee Titans. Intercepted by Crookshank. Fires ball batted way up in the air and intercepted. There it is. There it is. And the Titans will get it at their 20. Down three as Roethlisberger has thrown his third INT. Tighten up. Welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. I'm Mike Keith. The Titans are 5-1 as they began preparations today for Sunday's game with the Cincinnati Bengals. Coach Mike Vrabel, this is the opportunity that you had with your football team today to kind of wrap up the Pittsburgh game, take a look at the tape, make revisions, and, and sort of review overall. What did you kind of point out as the key moments and the things that you want them to take away from this game? Well, we just we, we have to be more consistent. We, we do too many things well at times, uh, but unfortunately, it's not consistent enough to, to beat a team that that as good as the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so you know, we will have to improve. We'll have to get those things fixed in order for us to have uh, success going forward. Let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six-pack of plays from the Pittsburgh game. Second quarter, Titans down 14 to nothing, need something big to happen, and Adam Humphreys makes something big happen. Certainly does. You know, we, we get a bounce around there. We get, a, we get a tip. Ryan's a little high, but, you know, Hump's been a guy that's always been, you know, at the right place at the right time, has made some huge catches for us. And we want to be a little cleaner than this, but, you know, we'll take a little luck when we can get it. So that set up the Titans at the 22-yard line. Just a few plays later, it's third down and goal to go at the four. And this time, Corey Davis is going to make the catch. Yep, and Corey does a nice job stuttering, kind of creating some separation there in man coverage. I thought that that was a, a really good route, not just sprinting across the front line, but but stuttering right there, giving him a little stick and, and being able to get across. And, and, and Ryan does a nice job looking him off and then coming back to him there. And, and the line did a nice job of allowing him to, to progress through there. Really good to have Corey Davis back in the lineup. Didn't have a lot of yards, but did have six catches and a couple of important ones in the ball game, like that touchdown. Yep, that touchdown. And then he had a couple, you know, there was, he came up big there in, in the two minute. Uh, at the end, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't finish, um, but, but we, we, we did put ourselves in position to, to tie the football game there late. Who else had six catches? A.J. Brown. And the big one came in the third quarter to get Tennessee jump-started, 73 yards, Coach. Well, we talked about making sure that we kept the quarterback clean on the inside of the pocket. You know, there's a lot of timing, a lot of trust involved in that route right there. there, there we, we did identify there was some space in there throughout the week uh, with the play fake there. And, you know, Ryan comes out of there and, and rips it right past, you know, Williams' ear. And then you can see the play speed that A.J. has, you know, being able to get vertical and being able to split the safety. He has good overall speed, like if he ran a 40-yard dash, but you just said it. His play speed, it's almost like he's faster than his 40 time. He does play faster, I think, than what, what people may say he ran at the combine. And there's a lot of players like that. And that, that's, what, that's what you're looking for throughout your roster is, is guys that have play speed. They put pads and a helmet on, and they go out there and they play the game and they just look like they're in a different speed than other players. Titans are down 27 to 17 at the end of three. They're on the move. They get to the one yard line, fourth down. Titans go for it, get a penalty, stay with it. And Derrick Henry over the top, old school to get it in the end zone. Yep, we, uh, we went, sent the fullback through, pulled the guard around and, you know, Derrick, Derrick was able to get in there pretty much untouched and, you know, just to, 
you know, just a huge drive, you know, converted some third downs, got down there, got caused the penalty on fourth down, and then we were able to punch it in there. So the Titans get it to 27-24 at that point. The Steelers would get the football back with 10-13 remaining in the game and would keep it for over seven and a half minutes. Titans finally got off the field with a takeaway. Monty Hooker makes that play. Yeah, well, Jayon Brown makes the play really to start and then Hooks in, the, in a good spot running to the football and breaking on the football. But, you know, you see Jay on there in, in coverage down the middle of the field is able to, to disrupt it. And, and then there's Hook running to the football, giving us a chance to, to go down there uh, late. But, but I thought that Dayon played well in coverage all day. Hooker's second interception of the year, the second interception of his career, gave the Titans a chance with 235. They were able to move down the field and advance. One of the big plays in the drive came on third down. It's another A.J. Brown catch. Yeah, they're not getting enough depth there, and he's able to, to kind of run a really good route. Ryan trusts him, throws it there on the sidelines. They're creating timing, and then you can see the corner there undercut. He does a good job at the top of the route, gives him a little stick, and you know, before the safety can come over there and affect it. Is it just me, or does he have an outstanding feel for the spacing to find that soft spot to get open? Yeah, and I think you have to have spatial awareness. You have to understand what's going on around you. You know, we send him inside a lot, and I think he does a nice job of knowing how far to go in there and how far not to go in there. And uh, and I think, you know, that that route there was a good example of when to break it off, and the timing with Ryan was critical. He and Ryan Tannehill certainly have a relationship and, and understand one another, but the, the thing that really sticks out about the Titans passing game is Ryan Tannehill will throw the ball to anybody. Anybody who's eligible and open, he'll give them a chance to go make a play. And I think that that's a key that we talked about that coming into the game defensively with Ben. Um, and I think Ryan's the same way. I think he gives guys confidence to know like, Hey, if I do my job and I get open, you know, I have a chance here to catch the ball. So turning the page to Cincinnati, that's the job right now coming off the Pittsburgh game. And obviously that's going to be a big challenge coach. Well, it's, it's a challenge every week, you know, whether you win or you lose. And, you know, we, we lost last week and we'll have to, We'll have to improve and, and make corrections um, quickly to, to go up on the road. We haven't been on the road in a while um, against a, a good, young, uh, hungry football team. We're going to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals more coming up in the Mike Vrabel Show, but the Bridgestone Clutch Performance Play of the Game is on deck. That's as we continue on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Mike Vrabel show presented by Coca-Cola continues with the Bridgestone clutch performance play of the game. Seems like Jeffrey Simmons makes one every single game, coach. Well, he's, you can see the size that he has, his ability to jump up. And, you know, we, we talked about trying to disrupt the football. You know, if it's coming out quick, you know, let's get our hands up. And, you know, you can see that he does. And, and when you tip balls, good things happen for the defense. Now, you've done this. You had 11 interceptions in your career. When you're where Jayon Brown is, how hard is it to concentrate enough to make sure that you get that catch? Well, I think it's a, it's a fine line between going up and high pointing it and, and going up and making sure that you catch it. Those two guys hooked up on one last year in the end zone against the Texans. Similar to that, Jeffrey batted it and, and Jayon went up and caught it. And, you know, sometimes on those plays, Mike, you get defenders that are you know, going to tackle each other and dive and knock each other off before they get the ball. So I think we were fortunate there that, that we were able to get Jay on to get up and get that football. 98 and 55 combined on our Bridgestone performance play of the game. As we go to break, it's time for Delta Dental Guess the Titan. And we'll give you a bit of a hint. He's a young guy who is contributing on defense and special teams. When the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola returns, we'll see if Mike can guess this tiny titan in our Delta Dental. Guess the titan. That is a younger version of a young titan, Delta Dental. Can you guess the titan? Mike Vrabel, can you guess the titan? Yeah, you know, this is my favorite segment, Mike. I love Delta Dental. I love the pressure that it, that it puts on me to recognize our players uh, 20 years ago. So I think that that's going to be a Monty Hooker. Ooh. 
pretty strong guess. I think. Wow, that's two in a row, Coach. This guy's improving, Amani Hooker. You're asking more of him on the defense. He played a lot in the dime package a year ago, but you want more of him this year, second year player out of Iowa, doing a nice job for you. Yeah, and he needs to continue to improve like, like we all do. But uh, I think he had a really good offseason, and, and we got to get him in there more and, and see what he can do for us. You know, it's funny because Jayon Brown is another player who made a big jump in his second year and now has continued to progress. He's not exactly old, but he's not as, as young a player as he once was. What does Jayon Brown mean to you and mean to this Titans defense? Well, he's got a great uh, versatility. He's got a great skill set. Uh, he's very good in coverage. Uh, he's rangy. Uh, he calls the plays. He communicates with the defense. I've got high expectations for Jayon. You know, coach him hard. He takes the hard coaching. You know, he, he played through through some pain, which I appreciated. Uh, you know, he wasn't wasn't at 100% throughout that game. You know, and, and not many guys are, but, you know, it was something that he fought through and, you know, give him credit. He's Jayon Brown, and he's this week's Rackley Roofing Tough Titan, standing by with our Amy Wells. Roethlisberger looks it over, drops, Fires ball batted way up in the air and intercepted. There it is. There it is. Jayon, thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us. I want to start off by talking about the Titans' performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You had a crucial interception. Walk me through that play and what you were seeing. Jeff got a good rush, got his hands up when Dan threw the ball, tipped it up in the air. I seen the ball up for a while, so I <laughs> ran up under it, secured a catch, and, and just hold on to the ball. Obviously, it was a real tale of two halves. The first half, not exactly what the Titans wanted. The second half, a great performance by the Titans team. What happened at halftime to maybe change that mindset a little bit? We couldn't have played any worse in that first half. And, and let's go out later on the line. We got a bunch of, a bunch of guys that, that care in this locker room, and we can build off of that. Is that a real mindset that things can't get any worse, so we may as well pivot and try something new? It's uh, definitely a real thing. Can't get off the field on third downs and giving up over 20 points in the, in the first half. And coming in halftime, like, okay, we got we to gotta break, get our minds right. Let's check each other and, and let's get right and go out with a mentality of let's, let's give it all we got. And when you do that and genuinely care about the people next to you as players and coaches, at the end of the day, uh, we, we had a fighting chance to, to win the game. It seems like there's no quit in this team. Is that the identity of the Tennessee Titans? 100%. We've came back from games earlier in the season. In this past game with the Steelers, we uh, gave ourselves the same opportunity and just came up short. So we got to learn from that and not put ourselves in that position in the first place. But uh, it's football, and you never know what's going to happen. How long does it really take to create brotherhood on a team? Our general manager and uh, John has put this team together and really good coaching from Coach Brable. And even though we have a different team from, from last year, we went to the AFC Championship and came up short, bringing back a lot of, a lot of key guys. It's a lot of playoff experience and, and, and getting that far last year, we know what it takes to get back to that point and, and we want more. Obviously you never want to lose a game, but is this a good opportunity for this team to maybe take a moment, recalibrate, and get back on track with a lot of football left in the season? Never want to lose, never want to lose, but but what a loss that, that we just took, definitely a learning lesson to see what, what we can do better, how we can do the good things even better, and ultimately be, become a better, a better team and keep on improving. Jayon Brown, thank you for being this week's Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. Guys, there's still a lot of Mike Vrabel show. On the other side of this break, stick around. He needs two yards to keep this game moving on. You see what you're made of when you go through something tough. Steady rainfall. And yeah, it's been a tough year. But Tennesseans are built for this. Grit passed down through generations. We look for it. We like it that way. Football is back, baby. Tough. Tennessee tough. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola rolls on with a sweet stakes winner. I'm talking about Sarah Hawkins. Now think about this. You've got a chance to win a suite at Nissan Stadium for you and 
nine of your friends or your kids or your mom and your dad or your neighbor, whoever. But you get a chance to be a big timer. You see the Titans and the Steelers in a suite. Well, Sarah Hawkins took part in the sweet stakes last week. She went to TennesseeTitans.com and registered, and she won a suite for Tennessee Pittsburgh. Look how she did. I was born and raised in Tennessee, so I've, uh, I've been a Titans fan since day one. You know, I'm a huge Alabama fan, and I love me some Derrick Henry. <laughs> Tighten up, baby! We wanted to do something really nice for our fans and give them an opportunity to watch this amazing matchup. So we did the Titans Sweet Stakes, where one lucky fan was chosen to invite nine of their friends to come watch the game from a luxury suite. Let's go, guys! I didn't think there was a chance that I would win at all. Sarah, our winner, is amazing. She filled out a form online on TennesseeTitans.com and submitted a photo of herself showing her team spirit. On Friday night, I got a bunch of missed calls from a number. I was like, why do you keep calling me? So I answered, I was like, hello. And they were like, is this Sarah? I was like, yes. And they're like, you won the sweepstakes. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's so important to constantly be letting our fans know that even though the football season's going on, it's in full swing, our priority is always on them. It's always on making sure that when they come out to a game at Nissan Stadium, they're having a special experience. So to be able to kind of up the game a little bit and offer a more unique experience was something that was really important to us. We're so glad that we were able to put it together for such an exciting game. Oh my gosh, I couldn't have imagined winning something better than this. I mean, this has been an awesome experience. We're so grateful for the Titans organization to even do this for us. I mean, this is something that, you know, once in a lifetime experience. The Hawkins family had a big time as the Sweet Stakes winner at Nissan Stadium. When the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola returns, it's the head coach's Nissan keys to success in Cincinnati. Stay with us. Mike Vrabel show presented by Coca-Cola continues with our Nissan keys to success against the Cincinnati Bengals. Let's start off with something that the Bengals do well. They are explosive in their passing game in particular. Mike Vrabel, you've got to eliminate those explosive plays. What we do, they, they run, they get some vertical routes that, that start to bend over there in post safety defense. So a lot of these over routes, uh, they're working the ball down the field. We're going to have to do a great job of eliminating those as well as in the run game. Um, that, you know, that's just – we've gotten better. You know, we've gotten better. We haven't given up, you know, as many as we had, and we've got to continue to improve throughout the season. Mike Vrabel's second Nissan key to success against Cincinnati is be sound on special teams. Well, you know, it's not trying to do too much. It's just doing your job, being sound, hunting the ball, you know, making our kicks, protecting the field goal kicker, protecting the punter, you know, catching catching our the kicks, catching the punts, and the you know, what I mean, just stuff that you know was uncharacteristic of us last week. But let's just get back to being sound and and seeing what that gets us. And they have an outstanding returner, and they have outstanding kickers too. Sure. And and, and again, special teams is such a critical part of the game. It, it, it's not something that's a throwaway and. You can see the difference in when it's done well and when it's done properly and when it's not. All right, the final key, run the dang ball, period. That's what we are. That's who we are. And, and we feel like that's a, that's a way to control the football game. And, you know, we, we had some moments last week. Wasn't good enough. Wasn't consistent enough um, against a very good run, uh, rush defense. You know, hoping we can we can get this thing back on track here as we go up to Cincinnati. And part of that too is you didn't have that many plays. You didn't have that many opportunities against Pittsburgh. If you could run early, more plays helps with that time of possession and getting it where you want it. If you can control the clock, control the ball, get first downs on the ground, and you know get it in third and manageable and convert, you know, we we weren't good enough on third down. So it was. You know, that game was, was won on third down by their offense and, and, and not good enough by our offense. Sets up your play action even better as well, right? Well, the more you can run it, the better you can, you know, you can fake it in there. 
And, you know, we're, we're going to have to continue to, to mix. We understand that that's our first and second down offense, you know, is, is being able to run a football and, and, and work play passes off of it and, you know, take our chances down the field sometimes. Mike, as always, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Guys, we're going to try to go get a win so we can come back here with a, with a victory show next week. We like victory shows. We sure do. We'll remind you that Titans Radio is on the air on 104.5 The Zone at 11 a.m. Central Time. Other Titans Radio stations as well. Kickoff is set for 12.02. The Titans and the Bengals this Sunday in Cincinnati. For the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. The Mike Rabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Thanks for watching.